What's going on y'all, it's the Kid J. Nolan here. Hey man, before we get into anything in this video, make sure that you like and share it. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you get all updates. Hit the post notification bell. All right y'all, let's get into it. I haven't had an opportunity to really talk about how much of a Tupac fan I am on this channel. Um, maybe in the coming days or weeks or whatever, I'll get further into that. I'm kind of like a Tupac stand. I ain't gonna lie to y'all. Listen to all the albums, all the unreleased albums, all the remake albums, all them documentaries that are on YouTube and stuff about him, his family lineage, all of that stuff. I done tuned in. So as y'all should know, there is a documentary out on Hulu called Dear Mama that covers Tupac's life, um, his mother's life how their lives intertwine, how their stories intertwine, and all of the familial concepts that come from their lineage, being part of the Black Panther Party and all of the political prisoners and political revolutionaries that are in their family. Uh, however, one person that is not enjoying all of this is Tupac's father, Billy Garland. Now, of course, in a the documentary, they did show that there was a little bit of family controversy. There was some uncertainty about who was really Tupac's father. They got a little bit into that. They didn't touch on it for too long, but it was a part of the show. His biological father, Billy Garland, uh, has spoken out about his disdain for the Alan Hughes directed Dear Mama, which premiered back in April. In a sit down with the Art of Dialogue, which is a popular YouTube channel, I'm sure it's probably come across your timeline, especially if you're watching content like mine. He revealed that he initially denied wanting to sit down and speak with Alan Hughes. Somehow he was able to persuade him into doing so, even though he didn't know the actual footage would be used for Dear Mama. So he basically went in not knowing that this footage was going to be repurposed for a Tupac documentary later on. I guess he thought it was just going to be uh, maybe released on YouTube, maybe the entire, because I think there was a two hour conversation that they had. And I guess he thought that that was just going to be its own thing. But of course, if he signed any release forms or whatever the case may be with Alan Hughes, the footage was then chopped up, repurposed and reused in this documentary. So clearly he's not getting paid for his appearance. Billy Garland says, we did an interview for about two hours. After I saw the interview in the documentary, I was slightly disappointed. Let's just say that I didn't like it. It was more about something else than about Tupac, if you know what I'm saying. If I knew it was about Dear Mama, I might have still did it, but I probably wouldn't have. Not for nothing. So... I'm guessing Billy Garland's issue might be more so with Pac's mother, Afeni Shakur, because I don't understand what his apprehension would be to know that the project was about Dear Mama. So clearly he must be, I'm not going to say clearly, but it seems to someone such as myself or the naked eye that he's still holding some disdain for Afeni Shakur. Maybe they didn't have any type of closure on their not to say their relationship, but just their co-parenthood of Tupac, um, the way that life turned out to be after he was murdered uh, or assassinated, I should say. Maybe they weren't able to come to terms or come to any type of, you know, agreement or anything. Maybe they weren't on amicable terms throughout the rest of uh, Afeni's life, who also is not with us here any longer. So that's all I can really say to try to defend what he's saying here is it, do, it doesn't seem as though he has like a really big gripe, but for whatever reason, he didn't enjoy the documentary. And I guess he did not enjoy the additional outlook being that it wasn't focused on Tupac alone. Another thing that he didn't like that was in the documentary is that he was portrayed as somewhat bipolar, right? So he then defended Pac against Alan Hughes, calling him a delusional myth maker prior to the documentary being made. Garland also says that Tupac wasn't bipolar, but he was rather reacting to people that were betraying him throughout the timeline of his success in music. So I'm going to give you all my thoughts, not just about this, but about the documentary in general. When I saw that it came out, I was very intrigued because I love Pac. I love everything around his story. I said that in the beginning of this video. However, when I saw that it was directed by Alan Hughes, it was definitely a red flag for me. And that's not the only red flag. There's the red flag of the Alan Hughes because Pac was not on good terms with the Hughes brothers. He didn't like them niggas. He went on TV and chastised these guys, made fun of them. And I know shortly before his death, he actually spoke about how he regretted how he handled that situation, but it didn't seem as though they were still on speaking terms. It didn't seem like he was being completely apologetic to them. He just didn't like how he reacted to them, right? 
Another level of red flag is that Dr. Dre's company, the Defiant Ones, produced it. Prior to Pac passing, he was not friends with Dr. Dre. He actually was openly dissing Dre on a lot of music. As a matter of fact, if you listen to uh, Toss It Up, which is on the Machiavelli album, the last official Tupac album to be released, he has a whole verse. The song is a ladies record. And he decides to come in with an additional verse at the end, dissing Dre the entire time. What do he say? Uh, searching for payday, no longer Dre day, Arriva Dolce, long gone and forgotten, rotten for plot and child's play. Uh, some about your sexuality as sweet as fruity as this Alize. So he was definitely going at Dre pretty hard prior to him passing. And, and we know he made that Machiavelli album just days before he passed away. He didn't actually get to put the finishing touches on that album. There actually were some vocals that really needed to be re-recorded and stuff like that, but he never got around to it, so they had to make do with what they had. So he didn't like Alan Hughes. He didn't like Dr. Dre. And then you got Snoop that comes along later on in the uh, documentary, in the episodes. He passed away not being on good terms with Snoop. Either I'm not as mad about Snoop making an appearance because they had a, a long-standing friendship in the industry and they had just a little, you know, a little brush up about an interview. I'm sure they would have eventually patched things up. But as it stands, Pac left this earth not on good terms with none of these guys. So I do believe that there is a certain level of when you watch this documentary, you kind of got to be cautious about the messaging uh, when Alan Hughes came on the screen to talk about his relationship to Tupac and it was kind of like him addressing the elephant in the room, you know, he seemed like he didn't really want to address it, but he felt like he had to because of the fight that they got into, because of their disagreement. I don't know, man. I just felt like, OK, it's cool that you may have outgrown the dispute or the debate or the fight that y'all had when y'all were young in y'all 20s. But who why couldn't somebody else do this project? I'm sure there's plenty of people out there in this world that wanted to do another Tupac themed project. There's so many out there. Why you? I did enjoy it overall. I'm not going to lie to y'all. Um, I like that there was a lot of studio footage. I like that there was a lot of exclusive footage of Tupac that I had never really seen. There were extended clips of things that were floating around on different videos, documentaries, YouTube channels and stuff like that. But to see more of them in longer form, uh, I did enjoy that. The fact that they were interviewing Pac's family members and people that were associated with his family, I, I did believe that they had done a pretty good job on that. But for Pac's father, who was also in the documentary, to have some level of discomfort or disappointment about the project, it does kind of make me look at it differently. Now, I will say there is a certain level that I'm taking his father's testimony uh, with a grain of salt because he wasn't really that involved in Pac's life. I think they didn't have much of a relationship until, you know, pretty close to Tupac's death. So although that is your seed, that is your son, and you outlived him, you're alive today, we must respect that. But it's kind of tough for me to look at you fully as well because Tupac went throughout his entire life, his entire career, um, talking about the fact that he did not have a dad present in his home and how life and his career and his outlook on the world probably would have been different had he had that figure. Now, he did have a stepfather, but he didn't have his biological father, right? So as with all things dealing with Tupac, this is a very conflicting situation. It's multi-layered, um, and some people are going to fall on one side and understand it. Some people are not going to care. But overall, I did want to talk about this because I thought it was interesting that he appeared in this documentary and now he's not happy. Let me know what y'all think of this down below in the comments. Let me know what y'all think of the documentary series. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit the post notification bell for all updates. I will see you guys on the next video. Much love and respect. Y'all stay safe out there. Peace. Beautiful people, thank you for tuning in. I hope that you enjoyed the content. Make sure that you're liking and sharing these videos. Make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. Hit the post notification bell so you get all updates. For all of my artists, 
my artist managers, songwriters, producers, etc. If you need a little bit of extra help with your career, man, make sure that you visit PinGameElite.com, okay? That's my website and my community for all upcoming rising music creators. I got two books on there, The Pin Game Portfolio Volume 1 and 2. They're going to give you a lot of insights into the music industry, how to monetize your career, how I make my money off of music because I am a full-time artist outside of doing YouTube videos. If you need some direct help, you can also book a consultation with me on the pin game elite website and i also have a pin game elite membership the free tier gives you access to all of these videos that i post on youtube and a community of people where you can engage but i do have the membership plus okay you can join that for 50 dollars a month or 500 dollars a year and i will actually go in and do all of the grunt work for you if you're not registering your songs on your pros if you're not with song trust or the mlc if all your collection agencies and all of that stuff are not up to par or up to date i will go in there and update all of that for you if you need help uploading your music to a distributor like distrokid united masters etc and you've been making mistakes you've been claiming content id on material that you really don't own hey man stop stealing people's money if you do this stuff the right way you're gonna make it anyway okay you can join the membership plus and again i will do the work for you and you're gonna get a free consultation every month just for joining you're also gonna get the two books for free soon as you join the membership plus all right much love and respect i'll catch y'all later peace